Hey folks, welcome back. Paul and one BUG here with a video that's probably long overdue. Uh, to my shame and embarrassment, this project has been sitting for about two years since I bought it from K1WHS. I'm just getting around to do something with it. Actually, I've had it here sitting in my living room for about the past six weeks um, intermittently working on it. I need to get it out of here and into the shack for a test next. So this is a um, 70 centimeter or 432 megahertz uh, roughly 1500 watt amplifier using a GS35B tube. To my knowledge there were only four of these ever made. Uh, they were part of a 6KW uh, one-off type uh, system made by Linear Amp UK back in 2002 or something like that I think I was told. Uh, to my knowledge, there are only four of these in existence anywhere. If there were more, no one seems to remember or uh, have any information on them. And there's very little information on this other than the partial manual that I have, which unfortunately does not contain a schematic or anything. It's somewhat incomplete. So uh, this was a, a part of a system that covered 415 to 445 megahertz. And I'll open up the manual here. It's some kind of RF generator. Uh, it used an eight, HP 8640 signal generator as the RF source. Into a small uh, pre-driver amplifier. A four-way splitter. Four 150-watt solid-state drivers. Um, and then these four uh, amplifiers like I have here with the GS35B tubes producing about 1,500 1, watts each, and then into a combiner, so you had about 6,000 watts RF uh, total. So, so that's what I'm dealing with. Um, these were not really made for amateur service, but should work fine. The caveat is that there's no uh, built-in TR relay. Not a problem for me. I run separate uh, coax cables all the way from the transverter all the way to the preamp box at the top of the tower. I don't need relays in the shack, so... That didn't scare me off at all. So a few things I did do to this. Um, I don't mean to be overly critical, but to me the build quality was a little bit um, less than ideal, let me put it that way. So I made a couple changes. One thing is I just, purely for my own situation, I mounted it on, on these oak boards which has a groove routed in the bottom which you can't see, and we'll talk about that later. That has to do with where I'm going to put it in my shack and, and what's what's underneath it, or hopefully going to be underneath it. Um, so I did that, and this thing is a beast to move around. Uh, the next segment of the video, we're going to talk about getting into the shack, but I built this wheeled cart to move it around on, and a lifting apparatus that's kind of in behind there, the plywood with the, the hole in it there is part of it. I don't know what this weighs, you know, like I said... Um, 100, 150 pounds or, or more. I really can't pick it up and move it around at, at my age at 61 years old. Maybe I could have 40 years ago, but not now. So I kind of slide it from this table that's on over onto that and then and then roll it and, and then hopefully lift it. So a couple of things I didn't like. Um, one was this high voltage wiring. These uh, secondary wires that come off the transformer high voltage and go over to their rectifier or filter board uh, it says in the manual that the no-load DC voltage gets very close to the 4,000 volt rating on these 10 uh, capacitors on the board, which are wired in series. And they caution you for that reason not to leave the high voltage on when you don't absolutely need it. Um, so it's a voltage doubler circuit, so if there's 4,000 volts um, DC or close to it on here, that suggests the peak voltage on each of these wires from the transformer relative to ground is, you know, it's probably going to be... Um, about 2,000 volts or so, and they just had them with the thin red and black insulation shoved in behind, behind between uh, grounded between fins of this grounded heat sink here. So obviously it was fine. The amplifier worked, and then the wires weren't burned or arced through or anything. So it was it was okay, but I just didn't like it. So I made a quick and dirty. Uh, honestly, I wish I'd done this better, but I want to see if this works before I put a bunch of time and effort into it. Um, so one of these wires was almost completely broken off the circuit board. There was just one strand out of the 
I don't know, seven or nine strands or whatever these wires have in them still still hanging on. So I resoldered that, beefed it up a little with some heat shrink tubing uh, here, which is hot melt line. So it's kind of like almost glued to the board there at the very end a little bit. I put this spiral wrap on just to get a little more insulation. Uh, added these standoffs. Originally, these wires were just like spliced um, onto the these other wires from the transformer here and a whole bunch of excess coil up in here and stuck or clipped to the back panel in some way so so i just did this to get them away from metal a little bit i feel better about it uh, over here on the primary wires going into the transformer they got this glob of silicone stuff holding them here to the side panel seems solid enough so i left it alone but you know one of these days i'd like to do something that doesn't involve uh, just sticky stuff uh you know a glob of silicone holding those in place um these panel meters were mounted only by a bead of this silicone whatever stuff around the outside edge and one of them i think it was the bottom one had broken loose and was just kind of hanging or flopping around in here so you know it took me about 10 minutes to devise these simple uh aluminum strips to go across the back and these little uh standoff um uh, you know, hex uh, standoffs, threaded standoffs in there, and the screws in the front, so the meters are secured in place now. And the other thing I did, and this is just purely cosmetic, and I know it uh, it doesn't matter, but I didn't like the way the top and co top and bottom covers fit. These are just U-shaped uh, pieces bent up to form the uh, the top and the bottom covers, and they had screws down the sides. You can see there's three screws in this one, three screws in the top, same on the other side. But they weren't formed all that well or all that tightly. And, for example, this top one bowed up more than a quarter of an inch here in the center. So there was a gap between the top of this front panel and the top cover of about a quarter inch or a little more here. And you could actually see all the way through underneath the cover, all the way through the amplifier and out the back side under the cover. And, you know, it's fine. Um, the RF is all shielded nicely here. Um, but I just didn't like the way it looked, so... You know, I just got a, a new drill press that uh, my family gave me, so uh, I needed to, to try that out anyway. So I got this, uh, grabbed this um, half-inch aluminum square uh, square bar here and made these pieces that go in, you know, to hold the top cover down. There'll be screws through the top cover down into here, machine screws, and, and these ones here holding it to the front panel. So that'll close up that gap, mostly, anyway. And the other thing was this back um, panel here was bowed in um, a good half inch or more in the center. It's on the back. Nobody would ever really see it. But this putting this strip in here kind of pulls that out straight too. Um, so those are the changes I've made for now. The next thing is to get it in the shack, see if it works. And if it does, then I want to get into how I'm going to monitor RF power on this. There is a directional coupler built into this. Uh, forward and reverse directional coupler, but I need some way to to take that sampled RF and and you know meter it so I can so I can measure the power out of this. I don't have uh, you know fancy bird meters or any of that expensive stuff here, so I need to come up with some way to you know for tuning up and just to see if any changes are occurring in power output over time. So there's other stuff to do, but the next step will be to get it in the shack, get it into place. Uh, make some cables to connect it up and uh, see if it works and we'll go from there So wish me luck on getting it in there. I will try to make a video of that segment here that uh, Maybe a few days for me, but you guys will get to see it here in just a couple of seconds And just like magic a couple of seconds later for you guys Here we are with the lifting operation and it's only a couple hours later for me. I did have some more time today so I got to this so this is just barely working if at all I wheeled it in here on the uh, wheel base there put the uh, top which is kind of a like a load spreader thing on and the uh, lifting straps I don't know if I've got enough height here um, really only can go up like another inch or less less than an inch there uh, I can jockey this around by tilting it um, you know tilting the amplifier a little bit but it's gonna be really really tight as to whether it's got enough height here to go up on top of these rails or the uh, grooves in the bottom of uh, 
well, these boards here are supposed to sit on top of here and then this is a uh, kind of a sliding drawer in here with some low frequency and 10 gig receiving equipment on it so this is the lifting uh, operation I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this on there and I'm not going to try to film that uh, since I'm working alone here and I don't really have a tripod available right at the moment that's tall enough for this so I'm going to try to get that up there and I'll come back and show you the end result if I succeed with that so there we are it's up there and I literally had about a quarter of an inch of height clearance to get it up high enough to be able to set it onto these rails here where it goes so next time this is going to have to come down for modifications and or repairs probably a few times so next time i will do something a little different up here in the attic um, to raise that six by six up a few inches uh, so that i can get a little extra headroom because this was this was really really marginal it just barely went but it is um it is uh, sitting on there in the uh, in the grooves here where it belongs and I still have my nice little drawer with other equipment uh, it can slide in and out uh, underneath here I don't know how well you can see that the camera is a little too close and probably isn't focusing very well so um, I'm gonna have to take the uh, lifting apparatus off the top so I can get enough clearance here on the corner to roll this over into where it goes and I'm gonna go ahead and do that and and uh, I'll probably come back and give you one final look when it's uh, when it's all there, and then I'll get to making up cables to interconnect this for testing. So there we are, in place, ready for initial testing to see if it works and or what else needs to be done to it. I hope it works. It's going to be a real, real nightmare uh, taking this down to work on it, and there's limited testing you can do with it in place so we'll see I need to make a cable or two to connect the back uh, the um, cable coming in from the antenna down here the big one there with the green uh, uh, heat shrink on it needs to come up to the back of this amplifier and it isn't long enough so I'll have to either make a longer cable or a piece to extend it comes up to here Chances are the, well, I don't know, the input cable <clears throat> for the transverter might be long enough to, to reach here. Uh, we'll see. So, I have to make some cables and then uh, another day, test this and see what happens. I apologize for the noise in this segment. The blower in this amplifier would definitely not be described as quiet. It's uh, very noisy. So here's what happens in testing. There do appear to be some faults uh, with this amplifier. It's on and it's warmed up, but the uh, high voltage is not on yet. That's uh, this switch here. When we turn on the high voltage, we see that there's an issue immediately with the uh, metering. We're showing about maybe 50 milliamps of plate current immediately without the uh, push to talk or uh, transmit uh, line being enabled and negative grid current. And so if we do hit the uh, push to talk or the TX line, then we get almost 300 mils of uh, plate current and the grid current comes up to about zero. So uh, I'm doing that with a little uh, push button I have in my hand uh, over here, just wired into the jack on the back of here. So something appears to be incorrect. Uh, I'm going to uh, switch the high voltage off and switch the whole amplifier off to get rid of that noise. Wow. So I've been in touch with Ian, uh, GM3SEK, who designed the triode mainboard that is used in this Linear Amp UK amplifier. Ian has forwarded me some information and uh, has some suggestions on troubleshooting, and that's more than I'm going to be able to get into today. So I'm going to end this video there, and there will be future videos uh, on this amplifier as I work on the mainboard and the rest of the unit to get it running and make some further modifications. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you uh, like this series uh, down in the comments. And there will probably be a few more videos on this thing coming up in the hopefully not too distant future. See you next time.